уважаемые товарищи, городской совет народных депутатов сообщает, что в связи с аварией на Чернобыльской атомной электростанции в городе Крытики складывается неблагоприятная радиационная обстановка. On April 26, 1986, reactor number four at the Chernobyl Atomic Energy Station in the northern Ukraine exploded. There has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. One of the atomic reactors at the Chernobyl atomic power plant near the city of Kiev was damaged. The Chernobyl disaster contaminated some of the world's richest soil and condemned tens of thousands of people to sickness and death. Protecting the children confronting the world's worst environmental disaster is no small task, but it's one that a group called the Children of Chernobyl Relief Fund has undertaken with passion and zeal. Natalia, a healthy young Ukrainian who's active in her community. But Natalia is one of the lucky ones who managed to survive a childhood in a region devastated by disaster. I was diagnosed with stage 3 Hodgkin's lymphoma. I received six different stages of chemotherapy treatment, and that was followed by two months of daily radiation treatment. When Natalia was admitted to the hospital, her condition was very serious. She had a high fever and several other signs that the cancer was attacking her blood cells. Unlike floods, droughts and disease, Natalia and her village were the victims of a catastrophe made by man. It was called Chernobyl, the worst nuclear accident in human history. As a child, I grew up in an area that was later known for having high levels of radiation. If Natalia hadn't received treatment here at the hospital, there is no question that her condition would have ended in her death. No question. Natalia was one of the lucky few who recovered from her cancer thanks to early treatment. Today, Natalia devotes much of her time to encouraging children who are just beginning the long and often painful process. I volunteered here to help the children because I understand what they're going through. I understand how important it is to have support when you're a sick child. Nestled in the foothills of the Carpathian Mountains is the city of Viv. But even though it's hundreds of miles from ground zero, radiation has still taken its toll. And here, People like Natalia are given an unusual gift, a fighting chance to live. Today, the Viv Regional Specialized Children's Hospital is recognized as one of the finest cancer treatment centers in Eastern Europe. They've succeeded beyond our wildest expectations. Their remission rates right now are on a par with many of the top uh, cancer treatment centers here in the United States and in the West. Of course, high-tech medical facilities like this aren't easy to come by in Eastern Europe, and they certainly aren't cheap. In fact, hospitals like this one owe much to the efforts of Western donors and to the activities of organizations like the Children of Chernobyl Relief Fund. We've been able to bring everything from big ticket items like ultrasounds and an MRI system to just basic supplies that we take for granted in our hospitals here, uh, syringes, uh, sterile gloves, um, even things like cleaning agents. Um, keeping the hospital ster in a sterile condition is a major challenge. So we've really tried to adapt our deliveries to the actual burning needs of the hospitals we work with. 
For doctors like Roma Polischuk, support from overseas makes it possible to do her job. And for these children, it can mean the difference between life and death. It's hard to explain how it feels to see these children who are sick, because only a person who has lived through it themselves can understand what it's like to be so young and so scared. With a little luck and a lot of hard work, the children can look forward to a healthy life, just like Natalia. As a doctor and as a mother, there is no better feeling than to see that Natalia has grown up to be a happy, healthy young woman. Ukraine is an Eastern European Republic located in the rich agricultural plain to the north of the Black Sea. For more than 800 years, the country has endured its share of war and famine. But little would compare to one of the seminal disasters of the late 20th century. In the early morning hours of a beautiful spring day in April 1986, the number four reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear plant exploded, releasing more radiation than 90 atomic bombs. Now, the tests show that the radiation was everywhere, including the United States. There was an increase in radiation, uh, increase in radiation in Europe, uh, everywhere, even in Japan. There was some increase in radiation. And so uh, it's, it's really not a problem of just, let's say, the uh, immediate Ukrainian uh, problem. It is the global problem. And though efforts to contain the disaster were undertaken immediately, the Soviet government at the time made a calculated decision not to inform its citizens. The secrecy was going on from 86 until, uh, until 91. And even after that, there was all, we could not get the uh, true uh, information or statistics uh, about, uh, uh, about this Chernobyl. The impact of the secrecy was uh, such that it delayed the, uh, the proper uh, aid to, uh, to, these, uh, to, to be delivered to these uh, radiated patients. Because of the Soviet cover-up, May Day parades in Kiev and Minsk went on as usual. As a result, thousands of children received dangerously high doses of radiation as they paraded through the streets. I'm bitter. I am bitter because I cannot believe that a government of that magnitude, as, uh, as the former Soviet Union was, would neglect its citizens to that degree in the healthcare system to bring it to that degree of just decay, I think that would be the best word. Eventually, some areas were finally evacuated, but by then, the damage had already been done. A conservative estimate of the number of people affected is over 1.3 million children that were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. According to the Minister of Health, 92% of ch all the children in Ukraine are sick. Today, much of the area near Chernobyl is still closed to human habitation. Because the half-life of radioactive cesium is 30 years, it won't be until the year 2016 until the international health community can even begin to assess the full impact of this disaster on human health. The contaminated area is still contaminated and it doesn't go away. It's going to be contaminated for thousands of years probably. Today, an entire Ukrainian generation suffers the long-term consequences of the single worst environmental disaster in history. Leukemia, birth defects, and infant mortality have all risen to the level of crisis. The most serious types of birth defects are the cleft palates, um, serious facial deformities, um, a syndrome called polydactylism, where children are born with extra fingers, extra toes, 
missing fingers or toes, missing limbs or deformed limbs, and missing or heavily deformed uh, critical organs. The disfigurement of the face, the disfigurement of the body, and those are because of the direct effect of the radiation on uh, cellular structure, uh, causing aberration of the chromosomes, as well as the uh, changes in DNA and uh, uh, also genetic uh, changes causing mutation. A long way from the mountains and plains of Ukraine are the suburbs of New Jersey. It's home to the office of Alex Kuzma, and it's where he spends most of his day thinking about kids on the other side of the world. It's difficult for people to conceive of an accident that, unlike a hurricane or a flood, where you can start rebuilding your lives right afterwards, this is an accident that lasts for decades and generations uh, because of the long-term contamination that affects the soil, the food in this area, the air. Um, and there's a long-term impact in terms of cancers and birth defects that sometimes don't show up for 10, 20, 30 years after the disaster. New Jersey is also home to the Children of Chernobyl Relief Fund, a humanitarian organization devoted to saving lives in Ukraine. It was founded in 1989 by Dr. Zenon Makiewski and his wife Nadia. Having traveled in the Ukraine, they had seen for themselves the deplorable state of health care in the country. Just nothing. I'm telling you, empty shelves, empty rooms, and screaming children. And one mother came up to me and said, can you give me an injection to help ease my child's death? 